Welcome back, everybody, to Sports Bazaar with my good self, Mick Malloy. And, of course, as always, doing the heavy lifting, Titus O'Reilly. How are you, Titus? Oh, I'm well. We're, we're coming off our three-parter. Oh, I loved the, the James On Hunt. James Hunt, the, the driver. and uh... oh, It's one of my favourite stories. Larger than life. I, yeah. Again, we live in the wrong era. <laughs> This is the one thing, all all these stories just teach you that you should have been born before mobile phones and cameras. Correct. And he wouldn't be able to do that stuff today. No. No one would. And the most underrated, or at least I'd never known anything about them, but yeah. the Heathcoth, what was it, the, the racing group? Oh, the, he- the uh, Hesketh, uh, Hesketh Racing, yeah, yeah. Hesketh Racing, I would have done anything to be part of that. <laughs> That's what it's all about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, now, okay, uh, as that disappears in the rear vision mirror, what is looming on the horizon? Well, you may remember a while ago we did an episode on the strangest clauses in sporting contracts. I loved that. And you had some really weird ones. Yeah. And it was a great way to bounce along a lot of different sports. Give us an example sport. Well, one of my favourites was uh, we had... Um, oh, fuck, I've got to remember his name now. Uh, yeah, we had Manny Ramirez, yes. the baseballer, who in his contract he had to have 24-7 access to sushi at all times. <laughs> Otherwise, is, the contract was null and null void. Null and void, like it was... I can't see sushi. Yeah, I've, I've ordered it and it's not here. Wow, you're in breach of contract. So I was thinking about that, and one of the ones I've always loved is how often athletes get injured, but in weird and mysterious ways. Sure. So today we're going to look at the weirdest and strangest and most sports bizarre injuries. sport injuries of all time. Oh, I love it. So this isn't your standard ACL, I've gone down, this no. isn't one. I'm... And it's how they often get injured. Yeah, that is okay. the thing. And it's... On field or off field, or can it be either? Either. A lot, some on field, but a lot off. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot of malarkey going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that leads All to right. a lot of things. Oh, I love it. So, far away. Let's begin small, I think is a good way to do it. Sammy Sosa, who is the famous baseballer, he once sneezed so violently that he sprained a ligament in his back. <laughs> From a sneeze. <laughs> From a sneeze. And this has happened a few times across the various sports. Put him sports. out. Put him out. Yeah. Put him out. So, and it's like, it's something that you expect someone who's old to say. Sure. Like, you know, I sneezed and broke three ribs. <laughs> How old are you, 80? <laughs> but not a sportsman. Not a sports person at the top of his game. So that that's an example of where some of these go. Um, now, you right, re- might remember uh, the Olympic swimmer. Uh, Ryan uh, Lockday, the yeah, who got in trouble in Brazil, Brazil, I think. Remember, you were over there in he Rio at the time. Falsely reported, a I think, bashing being a bashing at, at, at a, a petrol, petrol station. station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that now he had a very interesting one. Um, so an interesting ca- uh, character, but he had one where he once tore his MCL and sprained his ACL in his knee. Mm. So fairly serious knee injury yes. out for like a year sometimes for that. Now what happened is an ex- he, this is an excited fan saw him and she's a teenage girl and she ran up to him and jumped into his arms. Oh no. And they both toppled over in the process. She was fine but he had his knee on the curb and the girl was unharmed and so he actually tore his MCL and he got an ACL sprayed from oh. catching a fan. And <laughs> At least it, that's the story he told. That would be out for some time. Out for some time. Like <laughs> catching a fan. Yeah, it happened at a petrol station. <laughs> yes. Um yeah. Now, there's a guy called who we almost need to do a whole episode on this guy. He's a baseballer called Kevin Mitchell. And he had quite a few. He caused an injury in May, 1970, uh, May 1997. He was with the Cleveland Indians. A teammate, Chad Curtis, had uh, was sick of listening to a rap song that Mitchell was playing because it had some lyrics that he objected yes. to. And uh, he came off and shut off the clubhouse stereo turned okay. off the music had enough and uh mitchell gets up and they get in a fight exchanging pun- punches and mitchell throws curtis over a ping pong table 
<laughs> it's like a Western brawl. Yeah, injuring his foot. Over it or into it. It would be good if it <coughs> collapsed under his weight. <coughs> yeah, sort of like a wrestling one, like yeah, the Spanish yeah, yeah. announcer's table in a wrestling match. <laughs> anyway, Curtis sustained a bruised right thumb in the fight and he's placed on the 15-day disabled list. But Kevin was also quite injury-prone yes. himself, right? So as well as injuring other people, uh, he would often do this. And they're often in weird ways. One time he needed emergency dental work on a tooth that was damaged when he tried to eat a chocolate donut. Come on. <laughs> right. Imagine telling the team, Doc, I'm out. Now, the right. reason that happened is he put... Chocolate donut? <laughs> chocolate jam donut. He put it in the microwave. Yeah, okay. All right. And he said that the, then when he put it in the chocolate, all went... It was boiling hot and went into his tooth. And he obviously had some crack or fissure in there. Yes. And it ended up with him in the dentist chair having root canal <laughs> surgery. <laughs> All because of it. Wow. He was always getting in these sort of troubles. Uh, one time he was um, playing and he got hit in the helmet. Uh, right dead in the middle of the forehead, but it hit his helmet, yeah. right? Um, he was absolutely fine. The helmet did its job. Yeah. Except it flew off after being hit and he then fell over on top of it and did his back. <laughs> Which is kind of amazing. This is nuts. Another time he asked trainer a trainer for eye wash. His eyes were a bit sore. Sure. And inexplicably, someone had put rubbing alcohol in the eye wash bottle. Oh, no. <laughs> and he suffered burns to his eyes. No, that's no good. That's and, no good. And couldn't play. A friend of mine once was cooking Thai food yeah. in Chile and then tried to put his contact lenses in. Yes. And the it was, without doubt, the most horrific thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, it's interesting you should say that because... Yes. There was another uh, player, a second baseman in baseball. A lot of baseball ones in here. A lot of, <laughs> yeah. lot of soccer ones, a lot of baseball ones. They seem to be the two where there's a lot of right. spare time. Um, uh, Brett uh, Barbary, he was the Marlins second baseman. He was making nachos and got juice from a chili in his, on Man. his finger. Right? He then doesn't wash his hands yes. and goes and puts on his contact lenses. And he's temporarily there blinded. It is. So there you are. So Couldn't you're... open his eyes for a couple of hours, I reckon. Yeah. It's... How bad was your mate when he did it? Uh, Russell Gilbert. And he was, oh, was, he Russell was supposed Gilbert, to be on, the comedian. In, in, on live TV in an hour and he couldn't do it. He, he actually couldn't do it. Couldn't, he couldn't see. He couldn't. It, it hurt too much to expose his eyeball to, to the, the air. air. So <laughs> he needed a bucket on his head. Oh, did. that's great. Well, there you go. <laughs> He'll, he'll be happy to know he's not the only one. <laughs> uh, there was another guy called Chris Hansen. Now, he was a kicker for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right? Yep. So, uh, this is only 2003. His manager, his, oh, his head coach, Jack Del Rio, he kept a tree stump in the locker room with an axe as sort of a reminder to focus and keep, like, I don't really what? know why. It was sort of this idea you'd have it in and people could pick it up for motivation. And... And the, the sorry, the slogan was uh, "Keep chopping wood." That was their slogan for the year for the team, which is a terrible slogan. <laughs> You're a bunch of yeah, keep chopping wood. Anyway, so a bunch of lumberjacks. So he kept a tree stump and an axe in the locker room as a reminder to keep chopping wood. Okay. I imagine it's just like keep working, keep going. Right. You know, yeah, coaches yeah. are always trying to find get out the job done, some way of figuring this out. So the punter Chris Hansen, he he sort of uh, was fooling around with the axe. And accidentally gashed his leg and required immediate surgery. <laughs> he missed the final eleven games of the the season. Are you kicking leg because of, yeah, exactly couldn't do it. Now another time he got injured and missed out a bit of time because he and uh, the team kicker. So the, he was the punter and the kicker, J Jared yeah. Holmes. They're having dinner one evening, and they decided to have a fondue pot. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think i know where this is going which they moved and dropped onto the tile floor and it gave them first and second degree burns. Ban burns on their hands and ankles a fondue so this is so clearly the like, 70s yeah? this, no this is in 2002 what so he's having a fondue anyway he's having a fondue but main, main, usually you burn your mouth like not you know I've got first... Imagine going, like, you know, they always have the injury list. It says, you know, yeah, knee, ankle, fondue. 
<laughs> fondue into Well, them. you know one of my favourites. You may be well going to do it. Are you going to do cover cricket at all? We've got a few cricket ones in. What was your favourite? Well, Shoah Akhtar, who was once... Uh, oh, I re- haven't done this one, but I know this one. You tell it. This is fantastic. They just said, uh, it was printed in the paper, Shoah Akhtar out genital warts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which apparently is a bit slur in well, Pakistan Well, the thing is, the, Pakis- culture. the Pakistan coach and team, or cricket authorities, the, he accused them of saying, you weren't, shouldn't release that. Yes. And that they just, you did this to, it's true, but yeah. you announced it to humiliate me and it yes. broke down their whole relationship. <laughs> I think it would. Oh, it would. Well, if there's a you, kernel of truth to it. Usually yeah. you'd say a groin injury. No, they've just spelled it out. Yeah, they actually did. I know. Normally you would just put those a groin injury and everyone yeah. go, oh, okay. Like the groin injury covers a multitude of sins on the injury list. <laughs> now, Aston Villa forward uh, Darius Vassell, he um, missed three games in 2002 for an interesting thing. He'd suffered a swollen toast. That was the injury, right? Yeah. So... Um, now that's uh that's not great, and he it was it was a mess down there, and he thought to himself, well, I can see the blood building up, pooling under the nail, mm. so you know, and it's swelling and it's he's, not. He's fine. not going to take matters into his own hands. Here. So he took matters into oh, his own hands. Do it. <laughs> Got out um, a power drill. <laughs> Which is the only reasonable thing to do. And thought, I'll relieve the pressure. Well, you'd be surprised to learn, Mick, that did not... <laughs> <laughs> that did not relieve the pressure at all. How long was he out for? He was out for quite some time with yeah. that one. That's not a That's not a good one. Um, well, that is a good one. Power drill to the... You know, what, what do you think was going to happen? I, I know. That's one where you kind of go... The, his manager said he really shouldn't have been trying to sort the problem out himself. <laughs> There are people on the staff readily available to treat these sort of problems. Maybe the understatement of the year. Maybe you should go and see the doctor. No, nah, no, I've got this. No, no, I'm going to go see a tradie instead. <laughs> My mate's just renovating his house. He'll be out He'll be out here. He can do it. <laughs> the, the, the oh, thing that makes that's like a form of torture. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Here's one that's a bit less uh, thing. Uh, Colorado Rockies outfielder Carlos Gonzalez had to leave a game early. Uh, in, and this is only in 2011 because he accidentally swallowed his chewing tobacco. <laughs> he said he started to feel dizzy and dehydrated. This is baseball, right? Baseball. Is baseball the only game that where chewing tobacco is a thing? Well, they always, yeah, pretty much. They chew Maybe tobacco NASCAR. and now they do, they do sunflower seeds and things like that now. Why? Like, because the tobacco is obviously... Uh, there's like been some... Been there's been a little bit of research that says that tobacco is not good for you. Get out. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I knew you'd be a bit shocked about that one, but they say it's true. Uh, they always just have a thousand one of these in baseball because they're always having things. Now, another one that I was always worried, these are ones that are um, uh, interesting, that there was a goalkeeper for uh, in, in the Scottish League. He plays for the Queen of the South, so a lower Scottish yeah. side. Um, he once was visiting his dad's farm in 2018. And a runaway cow ran into him, <laughs> <laughs> causing him to miss quite a few no, games. I saw that coming. <laughs> it's just... At least it wasn't a moose. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, there was another guy um, who was a defender in soccer. He played for Heronveen, uh, Rami Kybe, and he uh, actually broke his jaw mm. and missed quite a few games from biting into a carrot. <laughs> It's a raw carrot, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, a cooked carrot, that, then you're weak. But yeah, the, I can understand a raw carrot if it's got a particular snap to it, or it's been snap frozen. They think he'd been hit in the jaw during a match, like clash heads weeks before. And the, <laughs> he broke his jaw eating and, a and And, the, and there'd been stress <laughs> fracture or something there, and then he went at the biting into the carrot. And that was the... This is point. why I say to kids, don't eat vegetables. Don't eat... Do not. It's a dangerous, it's a dangerous food. <laughs> Stick to donuts. <laughs> Stick to donuts. Uh, now, uh, Marty uh, Corradova, who played for the Baltimore Orioles, he once um, decided, as a baseballer who's in the sun all the time, yes. uh, decided what he needed was a, a session in a tanning bed, bed a solarium. The only yes. problem was he fell out, of, fell asleep in the, in the, in the solarium and got severely burned. Um, 
Now, I fell asleep. There should be someone yeah. monitoring. You'd that. think you don't someone. Let a guy. Of course, you're going to go to sleep in a tanning salon. Yeah. If you go to lie on the beach, you get. Yeah, you get. Yeah, you know, it's not warm. Fault, it's I nice. Reckon. Yeah. Well, anyway, the interesting thing is he had an interesting injury time off in that he wasn't allowed to play during the day, so he could only play <laughs> night games. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> they said you, the way the, the doctor said you can't go in the sun. It will hurt you if you go in the sun. So he just played night games for a while. That's hilarious. Uh, on the other extreme of being burned like that, Ricky Henderson, who's the all-time leading steel leader in baseball, he once fell asleep with an ice back on his foot and got frostbite and had to miss three games. <laughs> a guy who you would know well, David Lloyd, uh, nicknamed Bumble the Cricketer. Bumble the Cricketer, yes, indeed. The English Cricketer. Uh, he was one of the one of the greats for England, really. Um, and he once copped the hit. He was facing uh, the in the playing in the Ashes against Australia. Jeff Thompson. Jeff Thompson and Dennis Lilly was facing. So yeah, it is a Tom. It is a Tomo one. So this is so for people who don't know cricket, Jeff Thompson and Dennis Lilly in the seventies basically were terrorised batsmen, fast bowlers. So in cricket, you have spin bowlers or fast yeah. bowlers, incredibly fast. It's bowlers. like imagine your base bowler with a fast ball; it could kill you. And very and very. You know, Tomo was the fastest in the world, and Tomo was the fastest. So Dennis was probably more accurate, and but Tomo's speed was just uh, it was frightening, frightening. Like uh, like people think. So um, Bumble tells the story. He's facing Tomo, and uh, Tomo bowls one of his lightning bolt <laughs> down, hits him right in the wedding tackle, yeah. right? But they wear a box, yeah. and this is how Bumble describes it. He said that the box that they were, wore at the time, he said, um, was inadequate for the task at hand. <laughs> He said, we wore little bla pink plastic boxes at the time, which were totally unsuitable for the job. He said it, that when the ball hit him in the box, <laughs> it cracked open the box. And what I had inside fired, fired through before the box snapped shut again like a guillotine coming down. <laughs> Even after 32 years, I lose my voice just thinking about it. <laughs> There's retired hurt, and then there's retired hurt. <laughs> oh, that brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> there's always that's the... a famous story now because he generally does struggle to retell the story or relive the moment. Oh, and you know? would. I mean, talk about. And naturally, everyone else just falls around laughing because that's the contract when it comes to men being hit in the nuts. Yeah, it's you know funny it for everyone else, and you're glad it's not you. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> do you know my favourite cricketing? Uh, sort of factoid around that is the one about how the in cricket they invented um, the box yes. to protect down there. Yes, and this just sums up men's thinking. It took them another hundred years to invent the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get our house in order. <laughs> yeah. Box tick. That just sums up. Men's <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. men thought process. I get it. Now I've saved the best for last in that this is the most stupid thing you no. can do. Very last one. An NFL player, Plexico Burris, who this was well known at the time. His injury is he went into a nightclub with a gun shoved down his pants. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And of course, his gun goes off and he shoots himself in the leg. <laughs> Which was basically the end of his career, but why he played would you 20 take more a gun to a nightclub. Well, this America, is the thing, yeah. it's America, you know, why wouldn't you? You know, and uh, it was a self inflicted uh, gun shot. Self inflicted up wound. wound. He so goes, no the one prosecutor got involved because he wasn't meant to be carrying, obviously. They take a and it was view. concealed. It was concealed in a nightclub. Um, and the following two years, he ended up um, serving jail time for cr criminal possession of a weapon. He only Not played, for that instance. Yeah, for that. And he only played t um, 20 more games for the rest of his career. That is a shit night out. <laughs> that is a terrible... You've gone from strutting around like king of the world to uh, <laughs> blowing it up. And uh, at least in his defence, he didn't iron his own face. No. That to me is oh, I would have made a stupid. <laughs> Man, when you put them all back to back like that, it's quite a tableau of 
sports injuries. Uh, there, sh- there should be like you know they have a Hall of Fame Academy and, yeah. and you know the what is it the Rock and Roll Academy. There should be a sports injury. Well, I'm sure people can send some in because there's more out there. And I've got to say, it's it's my long term theory is athletes should be kept in stables like horses. Just yeah. to just to protect themselves, you know, give them access to UFC and just on pay per views and a PlayStation. A They'll be very cell. <laughs> Keep them in a padded room where there's no danger to anyone, <laughs> and get them out in the field. Titus O'Reilly, you've done it again. Thank you very much.